Hi, folks, Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show. .com, the Chris Voss Show! Oh my gosh. Dot com. Hey, look what we got today. We have the AT&T, Samsung, Galaxy, Mega. Look at this monster phone. Oh my gosh, it's as big as my head. Well, almost. There's a few things that could be bigger. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do is take a look at my ego, might be, uh, in this phone, and we're going to review it, and we're going to see how awesome it truly is. Then what we're going to do is compare it with a whole lot of other phones. So we're going to do some reviews on the cameras and some benchmarks and some photos and how the aspects and specs of this phone work out. So be sure to watch to the very end. Give us a like, subscribe to us so you can take and help us keep bringing you these wonderful phone reviews. Also, give us a thanks to our good friends at ATT.com with the fastest download upload speeds. Thank to them for sharing the phones with us today so we can bring them to you. Let's take a look at what's in this phone. Okay, so let's get into the specs on this baby and then we'll get into some other details here. Uh, so with the Samsung Galaxy Mega, what we're looking at is a uh, spec uh, height of 6.60 inches, uh, 3.46 inches in width, and 0.31 inches in thickness. Uh, it's running on Android 4.2 two that it comes out as and it's got a weight of 7.02 ounces that's 199 grams for our metric friends the physical size of the screen display is 6.3 inches 720 by 1280 pixels at 233 ppi that's pixels per inch it just has a super clear lcd screen and it has a 3200 milliamp hour battery. It's got a processor dual core 1.7 gigahertz. It's got a system memory of one and a half or 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. It's got built-in storage of 8 gigabytes and it's got expansion for storage of up to uh, 64 gigabytes through the micro SD card in the back. Camera is only 8 megapixels and uh, you have 30 frames per second 1080p recording video and out the front from facing camera 1.9 megapixels and it also of course has NFC technology in it which uh, a lot of the Samsung phones of course have which kind of make it fairly special. Uh, it's a fairly <laughs> So let's get into the uh, Samsung Galaxy. Uh, now it has pretty much all, most of the features you're gonna see on the uh, Samsung Galaxy products. One of the things that's brought is some of the new features they brought to the S4. You've got your multi-window mode, S-Beam, Smart Stay, where it will take us, uh, watch you uh, going up and down, Air View, where you can do a hover, over the screen, et cetera, et cetera. Driving mode will take and talk to you, uh, give you your voice messages and your emails as they come in if you're driving down the road. And it's got some of those basic things that uh, were on the S4. It's a huge, huge display. And of course it has your infinite swipe where you can go through it all. And of course you can build different widgets and things like that that many people like with the device. Uh, it's pretty much just a, a very big Samsung S3 when it comes down to it. I don't want to say S4 because it doesn't have an 8 megapixel camera. It's missing some of the features that are on the S4 when it comes to UI. And it's got a whole lot more uh, stuff on the S4 uh, with different uh, smart stays and smart looks and being able to wave your hand over the screen that don't seem to be on this phone. Uh, so I want to say that it's kind of a crossbreed between the S4 and the S3. Uh, you can see here it's got pretty much the same sort of build you have with the Samsung Galaxy. It's got your front facing camera, your speaker. Down below we have the home button. We have your capacitive touch screen for back and menu. So very simple that way. It's got pretty much the same sort of back you see on all the uh, Samsung Galaxies only it's much, much larger. You've got your camera, your lamp flash here, you've got your speaker at the bottom, and then of course the back is removable. And you can of course pull that off. And you can see here they just started this new thing. This came out in the Note 3. Uh, it's the SIM card tray that also has the micro SD card tray piggybacked on top of the back of it so that you can take and utilize them both without taking up a separate area of the back of the phone. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool when it came out on the Note 3. Here across the top of the device you have your uh, earphone jack, you have your microphone, and you actually have an IR blaster in this where you can control your stereo, stuff like that, TV, etc. Down the right hand side you have your power button. Down the bottom you have your sync charge port, a small microphone hole here. Down the left hand side you have your volume rocker button. All in all it looks just like a Samsung S4, S3, uh, 
Note 2, if you will. It just uh, is bigger. It's mega. And I do have to tell you, it is fun to play games on. It is fun to use, and it is fun to uh, watch videos on. And if you're using a phablet or maybe an iPad mini, and you like the Android product, but you wanted a phone, this is probably the perfect thing for you because it definitely uh, can compete with the phablets. <laughs> and it's a phone too. That's the great thing about it. And it's a Samsung, which makes a really good product when it comes down to it. Okay, so what we want to do is take a look at the camera action and everything that goes on with the camera. Now it has pretty much the same sort of style camera that you see with the Samsung Galaxy lineup. Um, it's got an 8 megapixel camera and of course you've got full customization where you can customize all sorts of different things. Uh, limit for MS, MMS, etc. It doesn't seem to have the uh, fast and slow that you have with the uh, recording for video um, that you find with uh, some of the other galaxies. Kind of, I was kind of amazed that wasn't in there. So where you're getting the bigger screen and everything else, the, some of the features uh, are, are, aren't quite the same that you would find in the other ones. 1080p, of course, video size recording. You can choose, as you can see here, different photo sizes uh, that work for you, 8 megapixels down to uh, 6, 3.2, 2.4. You have the GPS tag, ISO, white balance, exposure value, flash, all those different things you can take and do on it. And of course you can control it. You have the modes, which is the uh, really cool mode system where you can choose between auto, beauty, face, best photo, continuous shot, best face, shot and sound, HDR, panorama, sports, night, auto, uh, so you have those that you can take and choose from. You also have different tone textures that you can take and pull out. And by bringing those out, you can have those uh, taken, added to the, uh, the tint of your picture, if you will. You, of course, have four times zoom that you can take and utilize. Okay, so let's take a look at the pictures that the uh, Samsung Galaxy Mega gets. And as you can see here, it takes really good pictures. Focuses really well. Pretty much everything you expect from a Samsung Galaxy 8 megapixel camera, same picture uh, camera you find on the Samsung Galaxy S3, etc. etc. There might be some small technical improvements to it, but other than that, it gives great pictures and great video. Uh, the nice thing is you have a beautiful giant screen in order to watch it from, uh, so that makes a difference. Now it's recording at 1080p, but on the screen you're going to only see 720p. So even as good as your recording is, it's not going to be as good as what you're going to see when you upload this to say YouTube or show it on uh, a 1080p screen. The screen size here for this is only 720p uh, on the camera. So here you can see is the, uh, this is a darkened room that we shoot in. Uh, so we're testing the lamp flash on how well it can light up a room and take a picture and focus. So you can see here did an incredible job. Lit up the room well, took a great flash, and away we go. Here you can see we're doing a video. Uh, and in this video, we're in the same room, complete and utter darkness. And we're using the lamp flash to take and light up the room. You can see here it does a really, really, really good job. Next up, what we're going to do is take a look at uh, a shot that we're doing in complete darkness in my kitchen. This is a complete in utter darkness. And you can see here it takes an incredible flash photo and is able to focus on the subjects. Uh, you can even see some of the detail on the fridge over here, et cetera, et cetera. The detail on the door does a really, really good job. Uh, Video-wise, does a fairly good job. I mean, you're not going to get good video like this unless you have a professional unit. But you can see here, it really lights up the room. And i got to tell you, for all the phones that we test, this does a really, really good job lighting up the room in a big room like this and being able to show what's inside of it. So I think the camera is a great camera. does a great job. It's a Samsung Galaxy uh, camera. And you can't go wrong with it when it comes down to it. It's got a beautiful big screen that you can really enjoy the photos and pictures and videos that you take. Here you can see the uh, brightness test that we're taking and doing and the screen test that we're doing. Uh, and you can see how bright and vibrant the colors are for each of the uh, major colors that you find in a screen. So you can see here we've got some beautiful uh, divisions where everything plays out very nicely and uh, just looks really great on the screen. It's a beautiful screen. It's 720p. Uh, it doesn't have, I believe, the 16.7 million color brightness. I could be wrong, but uh, it wasn't on the specs. But uh, it definitely is a beautiful screen. I definitely like the Note 3 screen better, but that's just my opinion. 
of course, it's a 1080p screen, as is the Samsung Galaxy S4. But the Mega has got a big, beautiful screen and very good color recognition and definition. Okay, so here you can see we've got the Geekbench 3 results. It's kind of interesting. I don't think they've uh, formatted it for the Samsung Galaxy Mega yet. Uh, it came in with a single core score of 615 and 1104 in the multi core score. Uh, getting cut off there and uh, you can see some of the breakdowns as we page down through them. I normally don't worry about these scores but you're welcome to pause them at any time and uh, you can see them at home and uh, also you can download the app. You can follow along at home and you can see how your phone compares to uh, some of the other stuff that's here. I think we're at the bottom here. So uh, there you are. Now this is the Antutu 2 benchmark and uh, this is from Anatech uh, and they were the guys who discovered some of the cheating that was going on with the Galaxy Note uh, 3. Now we're not sure if there's any cheating going on with the uh, Galaxy Mega but what we're going to do is show you both of the apps that they have published. One is their normal app. You can see the ranges here and the scores here that they took and got on the Mega and we're going to switch over to their X app which uh, they have that uh, is supposed to be the X benchmark app that will take and identify cheating and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run that. You can see here, the score uh, pretty much came in uh, 19,125. I think most of the cheating is on the Note 3, but we wanted to show you both the scores so you had access to them. Okay, so here you can see the 3D Mark benchmark test. Now, this is the Ice Storm Unlimited test that we've taken and done here. 4542. And uh, you can see some of the breakdowns of the scores, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, looks like uh, some of our data here is missing, so I'm not sure how accurate this is or if the 3D Mark has been updated or made for the uh, Samsung Galaxy Mega. So I'm not sure how that's uh, turning out, but there's the data for you to take a look at. Okay, so what we're doing here is the billion counter app test. What we're doing is testing how fast the processor can count to a billion. So it did it in 13.292 seconds. This is the CF Pro version 1.3 uh, benchmarking app. And as you can see here, we've got uh, we've done a full benchmark with this. You can look at some of the individual numbers if that's your thing. I usually don't worry about these. The main thing I'm looking at for is the overall score. The overall score came in at 13,399. You can see the native and Java scores here, if that's your thing. And you can see, kind of see how it ranged up against uh, some other devices that are out there in the marketplace. Here we have the GFX Bench 2.7.2 uh, benchmarks. Uh, we have the off screen for 346 frames at 6.2 frames per second, and the on screen at 596 frames at 11 frames per second. Okay, so here we have the KFS benchmark results. Uh, this takes some measures you open GL. We came in with overall FPS 29.733. Here we have your SQL test. This is your RL benchmark SQL Lite performance test. What it does is measure is different inserts, indexes, all that sort of good stuff. And you can see here our overall score came in at 19,751. Okay, so here we have the Quadrant Standard Test on the benchmarking app, and the device came in at 8386 with a CPU rating of 18,796, memory 12560, IO 7307, 2D 100, or I'm sorry, 1000, 3D 2267. Okay, so you, here we're using the Passmark Performance Test Mobile, came with a system score of 2581, CPU, Tests came in at 6568. This test 4011. Memory test 3021. 2D graphics test 2849. And 3D graphics test 803. Okay, and here we have the GPS test. What this does is test how well the device can find itself on the planet and how accurate it can come to uh, finding itself. Um, near itself, if you will. Uh, looks like the GPS is coming with 20 in view in use. It's with an accuracy of 112 feet. Not sure what's going on here or, or if the app is monitoring the device properly, but uh, there's a habit for the test results there. And finally here we have our Velamo scores. So your Velamo score came in in HTML5 at 1962 and 710 on your metal score. Okay, so there you have it. It's the AT&T Samsung Galaxy Mega. Megaphone. Wow. Megaphone. I never thought of it that way. You could...
Anyway, so anyway, check it out. These are good friends at att.com. Fast, stone, and upload speeds. Thanks for sharing the phones with us. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you next time. Watch for us to do the versus comparison with this phone, with the iPhones, the HTCs, the LGs, all those different phones. We're going to be doing individual comparisons with all these and big, huge benchmarking comparisons with whole piles of the Samsung versus the iPhones and HTC phones. So stay tuned for that. No flicking.